Yes, you can eat safely anywhere in the world. All it takes is some basic precautions and a basic understanding of food safety. Hi, I'm Carolyn Sherlock, and on this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast, I'll share my best tips for eating safely, no matter where you are. First, though, today's episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Lunatech, makers of the hydration spray bottle, odor-free dishcloth, and self-cleaning washcloth. I love all three of them and use them daily. Lunatech offers practical gear designed to save water and reduce waste. A water bottle that doubles as a hose. I love it for rinsing my dishes. A dishcloth that doesn't get stinky. Oh, yes, please. Visit Lunatech Gear. That's L-U-N-A-T-E-C gear.com to learn more. Lunatech, innovative gear for your outdoor adventures. Aboard your boat, a few basic food safety precautions can go a long ways towards keeping the crew healthy. In remote locations, two potential problems exist. Food may have not been handled 100% properly on its way to you, and medical help can be a distance away. You really don't want a problem. Now, I'm not a freak about food safety, such as never eating street food. In fact, I, I love it. I've never gotten sick on it. Uh, many people say don't eat lettuce, but I, and I do. But I do always follow a few basic safety precautions. And yes, the few times I've ignored them, we've had problems. So let's talk about what are my basic rules. Well, let's start at the store. Don't buy food that looks suspicious. This includes meat that looks like it's been frozen, thawed, and refrozen, off-color meats, or packages with tears. I try not to buy food from bulk bins. You never know what may have gotten in. Don't buy things that look like they've been sitting there for a while. Anything that's covered in dust is suspicious. And buy from larger stores with high turnover. The food is generally fresher. Now, don't buy anything that's been sitting in water or ice unless you'll cook it or disinfect it before it touches your mouth. The sickest Dave and I ever got was drinking from Coke bottles that had been chilling in dirty water. We were hot and thirsty and just wiped the tops off with our t-shirts instead of using a disinfectant. Now, my experience has been that when meat has looked suspect, there's always a good selection of canned meats, and I'll opt for those instead. Now let's talk about bringing food home from the store. If the weather is warm, take coolers to the store for meats. And if it's going to be any distance to get them back, or really any amount of time, buy ice for the cooler. Wash your drink cans and bottles before storing them. And rinse your produce in a dilute bleach solution as soon as you bring it aboard. Um, Basically, you want it to be about um, one part bleach to 10 parts of water. In the galley, keep your hands clean. Now, I know with COVID, we've been going crazy on this, but continue to do it. Next one is keeping your food surfaces clean. Um, Use that same weak bleach solution to disinfect. I keep a little spray bottle handy to use on the counter and on my cutting board. And don't forget to spray your knife after you cut meat. Next, don't cross-contaminate things. Disinfect cutting boards and other surfaces after having raw meat on them. And don't put cooked meat back on the same plate that held raw meat without washing it. This is really easy to miss when you're grilling. Avoid porous materials for anything that will come into contact with any type of food. You just can't adequately wash them. And don't reuse plastic bags that held raw meat. If you feel that you absolutely must reuse them, wash them and squish them out with a bleach solution. Always follow the clean spoon rule. This means that anytime you put a utensil into a container, make sure it's a clean one. This prevents any cross-contamination. And when I say make sure it's clean, I'm talking about actually washed, not just wiped off on a rag or something. But like, don't put the peanut butter knife into the jelly jar if you haven't washed it in between. And squeeze bottles are wonderful for avoiding the problem entirely. Also, cook your meat thoroughly. A meat thermometer goes a long ways towards making sure that it's cooked to a safe temperature. 
Um, since poultry and ground meat are more susceptible to contamination than other meats, be particularly careful that they are thoroughly cooked. No super rare uh, hamburgers and so forth. One last little bit here is consider your pets too. Dogs and cats don't usually have huge problems with bad food and water, but you don't want them to get sick in a remote place either, particularly because vets are frequently very hard to find. When we first adopted Paz, our vet gave us some great advice. We were in Mexico at the time, and he said, don't let her drink any water you wouldn't drink. Ashore, we carried a bottle of water just for Paz so that she wouldn't be tempted to drink from puddles containing who knows what. We also made it a rule not to give her bits of raw meat or anything else that was suspect. And we learned to store her kibble so it didn't get infested with bugs. Again, you have to keep it airtight. Most food safety is just common sense. The times I get into trouble aren't because I consciously decide to take a risk, but rather because I just don't think about a potential problem. When we began cruising, I had to really retrain myself and stop assuming the food was safe. Now, this isn't going to cover every aspect of food safety, but if you follow these rules, you're going to be pretty well off. Thanks for listening to the Boat Galley Podcast. Have you subscribed? Don't miss the tips that you need to cruise happily and safely. Subscribe on your favorite podcast app.